excited to be here. Say to them, we taught the word of God. The very living principle for life. Say this kingdom word is my desire. Say it is the will of the Father for me. Say I'm a good steward. And today, after this learning, my understanding of kingdom citizenship and stewardship will be improved. Say God loves me and he wants me to be a good manager. Say my heart is open. I am receptive to this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Quickly look at the board. I am introducing from this April understanding the principles of kingdom stewardship. Say stewardship is the word for manager or management. A steward is a manager. And today I want you to understand the kingdom keys for effective management. This is more like an introduction I'm giving. We are within the Easter season. If there is something Jesus taught his disciples before his last entry to Jerusalem that would lead to his death as already prophesied, it was good management. Say good management. Good management. Say good management. According to the Bible, which is actually the constitution of the kingdom of God, this whole this book called the Bible. Alright? This book gives you a story about a king. You know, his kingdom, follow this carefully, his kingdom intentions, his citizens, his desire for his citizens. It teaches you how to live life as a citizen of this kingdom. The Bible gives you teachings about the world that passed, the world that is here right now, and the world that is yet to come. Amen. Amen. It is the best, most purchased, highest purchased book in the who are right now and tomorrow. Praise God. Everyone is going for this. There are mysteries contained in this book. Which mysteries? Even governments and the secular world are seeking to understand. Every prophetic word given has been fulfilled, and there are a few to be fulfilled finally. Praise God. He entered Jerusalem on a donkey, exactly as the prophets have said. Hallelujah. Say, Jesus is my king. I am not his subject, but his citizen. That's the difference between human governments, human kingdoms, and our kingdom. You are a child of God, you are a Christian, as it is described, you are a citizen of this kingdom. And according to God, one thing he wants you to do all the time and very well is good management. Do you know, including your life, if you don't manage your body very well, you'll be in trouble? Hello, my love. You don't manage the pregnancy very well, there will be problems. Oh, oh. There will be problems. So, Beginning this April to about May, I'm going to take this series on understanding the principles of kingdom stewardship. Understanding the principles. Listen to me carefully. Your pastor teaches about the kingdom of God, the gospel of the kingdom of God. And one of the things that has sustained my life and blessed me bountiful is principles. Principles are laws with universal application and benefits. Principles actually preserve life. Principles sustain. Principles don't shape. Principles always come to pass. Sitting the way Timothy is sitting right now is a principle. If you don't like to sit like that, lean. Let's see how long you take. Praise God. That means if your life is not built on principles, you are headed for destruction any moment from now. So when you see me careful, patient, diplomatic, strategic, progressing and following due process because I am an ambassador of this kingdom and I understand exactly how the ways of God look like. I refuse to be a bad manager in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Surprise! God fires people from work. Oh yes, today God is dismissing people from work. Oh yeah, he dismisses people. If tomorrow all of you right here who will be working, if tomorrow you are working, and you are afraid if something happens that this manager wants to fire 
employees. I'm one of them. That means your management ability is questionable. Okay. Amen. In this kingdom, what you don't manage, where you lose. What you mismanage, you lose. In this kingdom, if you're not efficient, beginning with the little things, no one will trust you with greater things. That applies to everyone. Guess what? We are all managers. Amen. There are those who don't think that they are managers so they can do anything, which is not true. Now, Jesus had a powerful management session with his disciples. Say disciple. A disciple is a student who is learning to become like the master, the teacher. Praise God. A disciple submits the authority, learns the ways to become. Amen. So he had this awesome management training. It was a wonderful training. Can I show you that training? We read it today in John chapter 6. He went over to the lake of Tiberias and went up to the mountain and the crowd followed him. When the crowd followed him, Jesus saw an opportunity to reintroduce this management course to his disciples. That same management course that is captured in his parable. Can I surprise you? There are 38 parables Jesus taught. And of these 38 parables, more than half deal with money and management. Basically, you can say the parables teach management. And the church has been missing this. That's why we have a lot, that's why rather we have a lot of tongue-speaking people who understand nothing about management. Tongue-speaking people, when they are challenged with little projects to coordinate the resources are poorly. Holy Ghost anointed housewives that are dangerously destructive. See? Powerful ministers of God who abuse time, abuse people's emotions, abuse everything. The educated children of God singing so good in the choir. Amen. Yet don't, do not know how to eat well and exercise properly. Think about it. Management, therefore, is too dear to God. Even that you are seeking for anointing, you are seeking for empowerment, you are seeking for everything. Management is dear to God. You understand what I'm saying? Very important. I have a responsibility to teach you to become good kingdom stewards. If I don't do that, I am failed as a pastor. And that's why sometimes the approach to where I do teachings may look so strange and unorthodox and not popular. But that's what you need. Say that's what I need. Come on, say that's what I need. So today, I'm introducing these principles on management, and I will make sure that I disturb your mind, Lord. Amen. Say disturb my mind with the things that will make me become good. You know, if you are careless, you don't want to be trusted with anything. A careless person is a potential time bomb, and there are many careless people in church today. Oh, man. They, they want to pray to God to bless them with many things. They forget. God blesses you according to your ability to manage. Can I say that again? God blesses you according to your ability to manage. You will like deny it. I teach principles. I'm not interested in all these excitements. I want you to understand this carefully. Luke chapter 13, chapter 16. Let me read something from verse 10. He that is honest in that which is least is also honest with faithful in that which is much. Are you hearing that? He that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much. In other words, Boris, if you cannot manage 1,000 francs very well, which is small, when it comes to 10,000 francs, you will mismanage it. If you cannot manage time during the day, 24 hours, what do you do with your time? You're under on social media. Or you are giving just two hours, you cannot manage well. When you will give it the whole day, you will see abuse. Therefore, the greatest threat in the prosperity of the body of Christ is mismanagement. Just like mismanagement is the international crisis affecting the whole world right now, we don't know. Global warming. Oh, global warming. This is that one. How did they come apart? Say mismanagement. Say bad management. Say bad management. Quickly, let me give you an overview. Why did God create man? We have talked about that a lot in this new year of rediscovering the kingdom of God. Amen. Say God needed. Come on, say it loud. Say God needed. A manager. 
say God is spirit. Now, say with me, F. Say again, F. Is the legal territory for man to rule over. Amen. You understood that? God needed a manager over his extended heavenly territory. Can I put it that way, therefore? What is that extended heavenly territory? Earth. God desired to extend his influence on earth, so he created his earth, and God desired to multiply himself. So he created this whole earth. Genesis chapter 2, verse 5 says, He had not allowed the rains to come on the earth and water the ground. Did you hear that? Why? Because there was no man to till the ground. Say till. Say again, till. In your Bible, that word means to manage, to take care of, to be a steward, to take responsibility for. Praise God. Therefore, we can conclude from that verse that the male man and the female man, or man generally, or the human, was created by God to do what? Manage the earth. In Psalms chapter 8, verse 4, right up to 9, David explains, who is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you even visit him. David says, you have made him higher than the angels. The word lower than the angels, not actually correct, the actual means higher than the angels. And you have put everything you created under his feet. Oh, oh, say management. Say delegated responsibility. So according to that verse of scripture, according to that, who is responsible for the management of earth? Say man. Say man. That means therefore that the primary duty, please take that over after me, say man's primary duty is the management of God's resources and the principles for managing God's resources are universal principles. Please listen to that again. They are universal principles. Anyone, anywhere in the world that applies those principles will get the blessings. If you want to doubt an argument, how comes you are so born again? Why are you not aware of it? Generally speaking, how comes the very born again are working for very wealthy unbelievers? Can I surprise you there? In that Genesis 39 forward, Joseph served in the house of who? Say Potiphar. Say that. Thank you so much. Was Potiphar a child of God, the chosen of the Lord? Who was the chosen of the Lord? Even through his dedicated stewardship, Potiphar sensed the presence of God with Joseph. What is the result? Say elevation. Joseph was promoted to the topmost rank of management. Joseph had responsibility over all of God of Potiphar's property, except Potiphar's, Potiphar's wife. Excuse me. Therefore, good management is your ticket to the next level. Say after me, good management is my ticket. To the, next level. to the next level. I am tired of Christians who think that we should be too serious with church and neglect secular principles of man arts and neglect rather effective management in our secular activities because we are now too much spiritual. Nonsense. Okay. You mismanage your marriage, it crashes. Amen. You mismanage any company, it crashes. You abuse your relationship, it crashes. I was doing a lecture in one of the schools to the nurses, and I surprised them. Say you are responsible for all the relationship breakups you had up to now. They thought of coming to comfort. No. It's actually a book. You make that kind of a book, but students are not following what you're teaching. Now it catches their attention. They want to hear more. Of course, when you say like that, you can throw a little bit of spices. Amen. And you come back to class. You are here, and you know I do that most of the when I'm teaching. And I showed them a few areas where they do mismanagement, and many understood now. So back to this management training session that Jesus had with his disciples.